I have a picture of my youngest, Maggie, uh, crying at the final episode of Cheers because I was crying. She had no idea. She was five. Where were you when it aired? On the air, we were in Boston. But this is when we shot it, she was there. When, oh yeah, we had the, the party. final episode. You had a party. We had a party in Boston at the Paul and Finch. Oh, live as it was going, as it was yeah, airing at nine, yeah, and whatever and it was a nine. Terrible right? endeavor on the Tonight Show when everybody was drunk. I don't remember that. Yeah. What happened? Everybody was loaded. It was like uh, it was crazy. So did everybody embarrass themselves? Oh, who? No, nobody cares anymore. But I'm sure we did. I gotta pull that one up on YouTube. That yeah. sounds like it was fun. <laughs> You know, it's uncomfortable for me to be an actor. As you can tell, my range is uh, from one to two. <laughs> and uh, I think you're at three right now. No, 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 no. You've had cameos in other shows, too. I have. Is that because people asked you to? Yeah. Because you don't want to do it? No, I never wanted so to do what it. So who was asking you, and why did you agree the to first, it? The uh, first cameo I had uh, was the first Phyllis show I ever directed. I played... Uh, the phone man. I don't think I had a name. I had a direct. It was my first direct directing job on Phyllis. It was the f not the pilot, but the first show after that. So I played Jimmy the phone man with Cloris, who's incredible. Amazing. Amazing. And I was on, uh, I played Mike Broder, literary agent on Rhoda. Rhoda, also amazing. I Valerie. played uh, a maintenance man on Newhart. And I was uh, hey butt double on uh, Friends. I was playing myself, uh, you know, as a director, and uh, you know, hey butt double. Mm -hmm. on there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How about the wives who are never seen? Uh huh. That's a theme uh, for you specifically, right? Well, no, Vera. Yes. Vera, I know. So Vera is Norm's wife, and we've never seen her. We've seen her legs. Okay. Sitting on the steps outside Cheers, you see. Oh. Bernadette played her, George's wife. Oh. Bernadette Burkett. Oh, yeah. that's an interesting yeah. factoid. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then uh, we never saw... Who else did we never see? I have it written down. I don't do? like to refer to my notes, but I usually like to keep these far off. Uh, but I'm going to do it. I don't remember who... Uh, uh, we never saw Carlton the door, man. Carlton, for sure. Maris. Maris, right. Maris. We never saw her. Lars. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, that Lars is more in in uh, Mary Tyler Moore. In, Phil, in the Phyllis show, Lars was not mentioned that much. So. Okay. But still, it's not typical. No, but I was not responsible for that. that. Was the writers? Okay. I mean, on Cheers, we you know, after Norm talked about Vera for a long time, we decided it's best not to see Vera. Well, what went on with Andy Kaufman? That's a whole story. Well, that was that's in, that's not really firing a person. That's you know, if you see Man in the Moon, mm -hmm. you see that film with Jim Carrey, you, you know the the the, the scene that took place on Taxi. Uh, Andy was agreed to do Taxi if uh, his alter ego, Tony Clifton, could be on one episode. So his alter ego was Andy dressed with a big fat suit and he was a bad lounge singer and prosthetics on his face. And so he came into play. His character was Louis De Palma's brother. So he had Andy playing, Tony Clifton playing Louis De Palma's brother. So it became difficult. So we had to fire him. And you were the one who fired him? Well, I know I was Ed Weinberger fired Oh, him. okay. And Ed, in, of course, Tony wouldn't leave. He wouldn't be fired because this was theater. It was all, you know, mm -hmm. it was just, you know, that's what Andy did. He was a genius. He wasn't a comedian. He was a performance artist and a genius and with all the courage in the world. And uh, it's, I haven't seen anybody like him that way, who, who did what Andy did. So I think that's one of the things that you do very naturally and very well, too, is that you just see things in people and you know it's going to work or you recognize the genius in somebody, right? Oh, yeah. 
but yeah, it was not hard with Andy. Yeah. I mean, the 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 you know they took Andy's character, foreign man. Well, you know the the in the white he had used to have the white jumpsuit, mm-hmm. and they made him Latka. So you know the boys at the gym and uh, Jim and Stan and Ed, and Dave had seen Andy and seen his act, and so they wanted him to play that. I had never heard of him. Yeah. I had never heard of him before Taxi, but. Once he was in Taxi, I went to see a couple of his shows, and uh, he was amazing. So, uh, okay, so Taxi, everybody hung out there. It was like the cool set. It was. There was a party after every show. Uh, Everybody was, you know, we would go to one another's house. We went to, I remember, there was a writer's strike, I think, and we went to Danny's new house, and we were going to do the Taxi Repertory Company because we couldn't do the show, so we were going to do plays. And, yeah, everybody was really close. What's the Will and Grace set like? Well, the second permutation is we're a lot older, so uh, there's not too much party happening. And back in the day, when we first started, there were occasional, yeah, everybody's younger and had more spirit, and we would go out occasionally. But not, not like Taxi, that was... And Cheers, we didn't do that either on Cheers. You didn't do it on Cheers? No. So it wasn't an era thing. It was something about the combination yeah, of people. Yeah, it was something about the people. Uh-huh. Because on Cheers, uh, the the boys would uh, they'd play foosball all the time. You know, when I need them for rehearsal, it was just, you know, you knew where to find them. Uh-huh. It. And it really got going when Woody came around because he lowered, he raised the testosterone level oh. when he came around. You know, one of the first things I had to do, what he do was leap over the bar. And that Teddy's hackles went up and said, I can do that too. So Woody brought a, this kind of youthful enthusiasm that uh, invigorated everybody in the cast. That's so interesting. You yeah. would never see that coming. No. But it gave it fresh life. Yeah, I mean, Nikki was older. The catch character of Coach was older. Uh, and, uh, you know, when Woody came in, it was he invigorated everybody. Well, he's another one, too, who you were really the first one to use him in a significant way, right? Mm-hmm. So you saw something in him. He's another person. Yeah, his audition was incredible. We had a, we had a, um, with the characters written like a guy from Iowa with, well, with big ears and reed thin who looked like a scarecrow. And so we had this kid who was really good. And, uh, uh, you know, I think the last call, Woody Harrelson came in. And we all went, oh, my God. I guess the comeback was Lisa Kudrow's choice, but she brings you in. I know. Which was beautiful. By the way, I think if there's any episode and scene that stands out to me in the entire series, which I think is phenomenal and I love it and I want it to come back, the comeback, is you, the night of the awards. Oh, God. She sees you through the crowd. I mean, you remember that, obviously. Yeah, I was, was, you know, it's uncomfortable for me to be an actor. As you can tell, my range is uh, from one to two. (laughs) And uh, I think you're at three right now. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I play that. I play Jimmy Burroughs. And uh, I was honored when she, I'll never forget, Michael Patrick King sent me the script, or Lisa sent me the script originally for the first. And I said, I have no time to direct it. She said, I don't want you to direct it. I want you to play Jimmy the director. So uh, then the last one was sweet. You know, and I had... The first one, the pilot was hard for me because I had to, uh, I had to act with Lisa, who was this incredible character that was so unfamiliar to me. And I had to, I had to be able to act with her and not say, oh God, she's my friend. Michael, Michael Patrick King was directing it. And (laughs) I would always say to him, God, she gets shit on in every scene. You need to have a redemption. He says, I, I don't want to do that. Right. I want to get a shit on in every scene. Exactly. He said, well, you're accomplishing your point. And uh, 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 so, you know, I she was always Lisa to me. Mm-hmm. 